Hello friends, welcome to my channel again. In today's session, we are going to see Raymond Tree algorithm. Raymond Tree algorithm is a distributed mutual exclusion token based algorithm. Normally, in the distributed environment, shared resources need to be accessed by multiple sites. The site should use the shared resource without any conflicts. Consider that sites are using a shared memory. So, if all sites are using that shared memory, then we can say that due to the concurrent access to that shared memory, there can be some problems or data integrity may get lost. So that's why we can use the mutual exclusion principle. Only one site will execute the critical section and other sites will wait. So the site which will be having token will go into the critical section and will execute the critical section. That is what the basic principle of Raymond tree algorithm. Sites are arranged in the logical directed tree structure. So this is what the diagram. If we see this diagram, we can say that there are seven sites and the sites are arranged in the logical tree structure. But the important point in this structure is directed arrows are used inside the tree. If you look at this node, then we can say that all arrows are coming towards site 2. So this is a root node. Root node will always hold the token. The site which is at the root node and that is having the token will execute the critical section. In the diagram, site number 2 will execute the critical section. Let's go ahead. Whenever site wants token, it sends request to the root node. Once root node finishes its execution inside the critical section, it may release the token. And when the token is released, that token is given to the requesting node or requesting site. While doing this, it reshapes the tree so that the requesting node becomes root node of the tree. So the philosophy of Raymond tree algorithm is the node which is executing critical section will be having token and that will be the root node of the tree. So we will see it stepwise and slowly in the upcoming example. Let us consider the example. In this case, site P is currently holding the token. So if you look at the directed arrows, so directed arrows, all arrows are directing towards the root node. So P is a root node and P is currently holding the token. Now site R needs the token. So site R has to request the root node to release the token. So whenever P node completes its execution inside the critical section, it will release the token and that token will be shifted from P to Q and then to the R side. When the token is shifted from P to Q, so token will be moved in this way from P to Q and then from Q to R. So the token will be there with R. So look at the directions of the arrows in this case. All the arrows are pointing towards the R node and that R node is now becoming new root node. Let's see the example. One tree is shown in this diagram. So it contains seven nodes P0 to P6. Initially, we assume that P0 holds the token. So P0 is our root node. It will execute the critical section. Once it will finish the critical section execution, then it will release the token and pass that token to the requesting site. So now we are currently saying that P0 is the current root node. Now P3 wants the token. So P3 adds itself into its own FIFO queue. 3 is added inside the FIFO queue and sends request message to its parent P2. Now, when the request will be received by the parent of P3, that is what P2, then P2 will add one entry inside its queue, that is the request came from P3. Now the request is reached to the site P2. P2 has to forward it to its parent node because P2 is not the node which is having the token. The request is passed by P2 to P1. P1 receives request from P2. P1 adds P3 into its FIFO queue and passes the request message to its parent. That is what P0. But in between suppose, site P2 also needs the token. 
so site p2 will now check its queue queue is non empty so site p2 will add its entry inside the queue so now meanwhile the request which was reached to p1 will be forwarded to p0 now p0's queue will contain the request of p3 consider that p0 is still executing in the critical section when p0 finishes its execution in the critical section it surrenders the token so p0 will check its queue if the queue is non empty then it will release the token and forward that token towards the requesting site then the process of passing the token to p3 begins as p3 is the requesting site token will be given to p3 the entry of p3 will be deleted from top of the queue also the directions of the arrows are now changed so this is the very important thing that is going to happen inside the graph when p0 will surrender the token it will send that token to the earlier node and will change the direction of the arrow now the arrow will point to p1 this makes p1 as a root node temporarily now p1 will check the front of the queue and then it will come to know that p3 site has done request for the token so p1 will pass that token to p2 and it will then remove the entry of p3 site from its queue it will also change the direction of the arrow so now p2 will temporarily become the root node at p2 p2 will again check the front of the queue and from that p2 will come to know that p3 site is demanding for the token it will pass that token to p3 site and it will remove the front of the queue p2 has removed site number 3 from the front of the queue and now the direction of the arrow are changed now all arrows are pointing to p3 and p3 become a root node so as p3 received the token now p3 can execute the critical section now meanwhile p2 checks the front element of the queue and realize that it needs the token p2 will send request message to its parent p3 and the request is inserted into the queue of p3 now as soon as p3 completes its execution in the critical section it checks the front of the queue and sends the token to the site which is there at the front of the queue so in this case p2 site is there at the front of the queue so p3 will pass the token to p2 site and also changes the direction of the arrow so in this case p3 has forwarded the token to site p2 and the direction of the arrow is now changed so all arrows are pointing to p2 so as p2 received the token so p2 will delete the entry from the front of its queue now p2 holds the token and p2 will execute the critical section once its execution in the critical section is over then p2 will check the queue and from that it will decide to which site it has to forward the token then p2 will surrender the token and forward it to the site which is at front of the queue this process will get repeated again and again and the token will be passed from one site to another site so this is what the raman tree algorithm in short raman tree algorithm helps the sites which are working into the distributed environment to execute the critical section so let's summarize the raman tree algorithm raman tree algorithm is based on mutual exclusion principle it is a token based algorithm the site which is holding the token will execute the critical section so if you like the session kindly press the bell icon subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends thank you